guys, so I'm going to go through the Calvin cycle. So this is the second step in photosynthesis. Um, this is also sometimes called the light independent reactions because they don't require light like our first step, the light dependent reactions do. This is where we are taking um, that carbon dioxide and we're building sugar. Okay, so it's using that ATP and NADPH that we created uh, and formed in the light dependent reactions. And it's used to do a reduction, which is a chemical reaction, basically just turning carbon dioxide, CS2, into C6H12O6, which is glucose. Okay, this is occurring in the stroma of the chloroplast. So remember before that our light dependent reactions happen in the thylakoid. This is now happening in the stroma, which is outside of the thylakoid. Okay, so it's using the ATP, NADPH, and CO2, and it's producing something called glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, or G3P, which is used to make glucose. Okay, this is kind of the big overview, and we're going to go into the, some of the nitty-gritty details um, in the next couple of slides, but these are the big things that you want to make sure that we definitely take away um, from the Calvin cycle. Okay, so there are three phases of the Calvin cycle, and we don't need to memorize the names, but it goes through a carbon fixation phase, a reduction phase, and then we generate um, something called RUBP, which is a carbon dioxide acceptor. Okay, so here's carbon dioxide shown, and we're turning that into a glucose molecule. Okay, so the first phase is carbon fixation. Um, we are basically um, taking a molecule called RUBP, which is ribulose bisphosphate. You don't need to know that name other than RUBP. It's a starting five carbon molecule. And keep in mind that throughout this, um, we're going to be talking about mostly keeping track of the six carbons that are necessary for glucose and the carbons from carbon dioxide. But there are other like hydrogens and oxygens in here as well. But we're going to mostly focus on counting the number of carbons. Okay. So at the beginning, we are taking RUBP, which again, five carbon, and we're adding a carbon dioxide to it. That's why I said it's a carbon dioxide acceptor because we take it, we add it together. Now we have a six carbon thing. Yay, because glucose is six carbon, but um, that's what this step is. Yeah, carbon dioxide is fixed onto RUBP. But, and this happens three at a time. Okay, so now we have three six carbon things, but it's unstable this molecule. So it actually immediately falls apart into two, three carbon things. So we um, are working in the right direction. We just aren't at glucose yet. Okay. The second step is reduction. So this is where we're using some of that ATP and NADPH that we used from, that we produced in our light dependent reactions. And um, what's going to happen is these three carbon things, which we don't need to know the name of them, are going to um, get, yeah, um, they get turned into G3P, which is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Okay. And that ATP we just mentioned came from those light reactions. So these are being reduced. So you might remember gain electrons is reduced. We're basically just taking electrons from NADPH and some from ATP and we're, um, and the energy from ATP to add electrons here and turn it into G3P. Okay, that is the second step. The last step, we're going to use a little bit more ATP, and we're going to regenerate our UBP, which remember was our starting molecule, because this is a cycle, so it goes in a circle. So one of these G3Ps is produced. Okay, that's the three carbon dioxides we started with. We now have a three carbon molecule, our G3P. These other ones, we're going to rearrange them into our UBP again, which remember had five carbons. So we do that by just rearranging the carbon molecules. This is again happening with enzymes, um, and it's not exactly happening in this way, but the idea is that we're taking those carbons and we're rearranging them into five carbon things. And now we have our UBP, we can do the cycle again. And that's what happens. We get more carbon dioxide. We add it onto our UBP. It immediately falls apart. We use NADPH and ATP to turn that into G3P. Then we now have a G3P that we put to the side, and these other ones are regenerated back into our UBP. That is the story of the Calvin cycle. 
Okay, after we've done this twice, we now have two three carbon things, which are um, G3P, and these can come together and form a six carbon glucose molecule. So that is how we're making glucose. It has to go through two cycles of the carbon cycle to get two G3Ps that turn into glucose. So that is the story of the Calvin cycle. Hope this is helpful. Bye, guys.